Hey guys, this is Navlaj Sharma and today we will we'll discuss the SQL cursors. Before we start discussing on the SQL cursor, I think we should understand what is the result set in the SQL. As you can see, we have a table that is the student details and in this student details we have some fields, roll number, name, class and marks in science, math, English and we have some data in there. So, when you execute the query and fetch the data from this table, then we get this kind of result. Result set, this is called the result set because result sets is made of the row and columns. On the first row, we have the row number 1, then Anil. On the second row, we have the row number But sometimes we have a requirement. A requirement is that we have to calculate the total of subjects, percentage and grade for each and every student. For this requirement, we have to process each row one by one. Then the SQL cursors can play an important role for this requirement because SQL cursor has the capacity of doing that job. SQL cursor can pick the row one by one and process that row then move to the next rows. So when the like data set is fetched and used in the SQL cursor, it is called the active data set. But there is a recommendation from the best practice SQL Server. SQL Server should not be used because it might have impact on the performance. Now, the, what is SQL cursor? SQL cursor is a temporary work area created in system memory. What it mean? When you declare and create a cursor, so that cursor occupies the memory of the system and it because it processes the row one by one in the memory and SQL server SQL cursor has the pointer pointer means the pointer refers the row of the active data set so SQL Server can hold more than one row but can process only one row at a time. It means it keeps all the records in the memory or in the cache and it pick up the row one by one from that data set. As you can see in the this diagram we have some arrow that in red color these are the pointers but we have only one point in the data set. SQL cursor first of all when you like and open then it is set on top of the active data set top of top of the active data set means there is no row on the top when you like fetch the first row the pointer is set on the first row and then when the processing is done the pointer moves on the second row it means row number 2 and the process is done, then the pointer moves on the row number 3. This process goes on until of the end of the active data sets. Again, there is a recommendation for the cursors. Cursors can be replaced with the join. If you are using the multiple tables in the cursors, so you should use the joints rather than the cursor. Okay, now we come to the type of the cursor in the SQL. There are two types of the cursor in the SQL, implicit cursor and explicit cursor. Implicit cursor, when you execute the DML statement like the insert, update and delete, then system internally and automatically use the implicit cursor. Explicit, explicit cursor, when you like create your own cursor then that kind of cursor is called the explicit cursor and when you create the explicit cursor then we have the five components for creating a explicit cursor first of all is the declare cursor you have to declare the cursor with the name of the cursor when you declare the cursor then in that cursor you need to fetch the data from the some kind of table then you use the select statement after declaring the cursor 
you have to open the cursor then the open keyword is there for opening the cursor next is the fetch step fetch means it retrieve the data from the cursor active set after processing of all rows then there are two more components that's very important close and deallocate close means it close the cursor and deallocate means it clean the memory occupied by the cursor okay now we will explain with the, this diagram so first of all on the top we have the declare declare means it create a memory area then you open the cursor cursor means open means identify the active set and fetch fetch set the pointer for first row and load information into variable so after fetching the first row it checks if next record is there if the record is there then it goes back to the fetch statement and if it is the end of rows then you like you close the cursor and deallocates deallocates it release memory clean memory from your server okay now we come to the types of the cursors there are four types of the cursors static cursor fast forward dynamic and the key set static cursor it fetches the data from the tables or from data set and then it keeps the data in cache and a static cursor you can move forward and backward it means you can like move in active data set you can fetch the previous data and the next data then the fast forward this is the default type of cursor it is same to the static cursor the difference is you can go only the forward then next is the dynamic when you use the dynamic cursor and you are using some kind of addition and deletion then that is reflected in your database immediately even the cursor is open next is the key set this is very similar to the dynamic but the difference is when you are making change in the transaction then that change is not reflected in your table it means other user cannot access the changed or updated data when you fetch the data there are total six method to access the data from the cursor the first one the last next prior absolute and relative when you use the first one then it will fetch the very first records from the active set when you say last one then it will retrieve the the last record from the active data set next means if you are like fetching the first row and you so say next one then it will retrieve the row number second and the prior suppose you or the pointer is on the fifth row and you say fetch the prior then it will retrieve the row number four and the absolute if you say ab fetch absolutes five records so it will retrieve the records from one to five and the next is the relative relative means if you are on the say fifth records and you say relative three then it will it will retrieve from fifth to eighth records relative, relative three records okay let us do it on the sql server so you can see we have a query that is a select start from the student details because already we have created this table and we have the data already we have seen on the video so we have a program using the cursor the purpose of this program is to calculate the total of the marks obtained by the each and every students then calculate the percentage and finally calculate the grade as you can see we have some local variables declared in this program then first step is the declare this one declare and this is the name of the cursor student cursor and we have this select statement it means 
we are all the rows from the student tables. We are fetching these information, roll number, student name, marks, science, marks, and marks in math. So when this, once this cursor is declared and populated, then we have to open this cursor. Then we have a statement open student cursor. After opening the cursor, the pointer is set on the null. It means the pointer is having no records. So when we use the very first statement of fetch, fetch next from, at that point, the SQL Server pointer points the very first row on the active data set and it fetches the information, roll number, student name, marks, signs and store this information in the local variable which is already declared. Now, the pointer is set on the very first record. Now we have to process all the rows one by one. So we will be using the loop while loop. You can see there is a variable that is a global variable fetch status. If there is no record, the value of the fetch status would be the minus one. If there is a record, then value will be the zero. So in this loop, we you can see we are printing the information of the students name, roll number, science, math, and then we have the this kind of calculation. We are adding the marks of all subjects and assigning the total marks variable. Then we are calculating the percentage total marks by divided by the three subjects. And finally, then we have some condition because on the basis of the condition, we are calculating the grade. If the percentage is greater than 80, then grade A. If percentage greater than 60 and percentage less than 80, then grade B. And finally, then we have the grade C. After this calculation, because this calculation was for a only one student, then we use the next fetch next statement. First of all, in the loop, this will check if another row exists. If row exists, then this statement again will fetch the information from the next record and store those information all these variables. So this will go on until all the rows. And finally, when the all rows are processed in the active data set, then we are closing the cursor. This is very important. And once the cursor is closed, then we are cleaning the memory because as we know, the cursor takes the memory. It runs in the memory of the system. So it is very, very necessary to clean the memory after the task is done or cursor is closed. So once all records are processed, the cursor is closed and then you can see the result. The very first student is Anil, whose roll number is the one, science, ma then marks in science, math and English. Then total we have the 6, 6 and percentage 54 percent, then grade C. And the same information, same calculation is up for another student that does need. And for Ajay, for Vijay, for Maloj and for Geeta and for Sita, for Lita. So we have the calculation for each and every student. So this is the end of the topic. Thanks for watching this video. And for more information, you can visit on our portal, education.lotusamy.com. And if you like this video, please share and subscribe. Thank you.